Game On Magazine is sitting with Shannon at the University of Pretoria, uh, where she's just about to go do some training. Shannon, how are you today? I'm very good, and you, thank you. Oh, I can't complain, thank you. Shannon, um, you are a rhythmic gymnastic. Before we get into the nitty gritties of, of, of your sport, let's start off by how did you get involved in, in uh, how did you get involved in gymnastics? Um, well, what happened was um, when I was little, we were in a restaurant and the 2004 Olympics were on and the rhythmic gymnastics was playing and I said to my mom, um, mom, I can do that. And she's like, okay, whatever, whatever. And I was like, mom, I can do that. Please, can you start me up in gymnastics? So we went and we looked for the gymnastics and we found artistic gymnastics. So we started off with there because we couldn't find the rhythmic. And then about six months later, we saw my coach training at the same gym. And then I started up there and that's basically how I started. All right, well, there's, there's different types of, um, of gymnastics and yours is rhythmic. The walk us through it. What is rhythmic gymnastics? Um, well, it's a blend of um, music, art, drama, dance and skill and performance. And like the skills that I talk about is like balance, flexibility, strength, performance and like coordination of apparatus. So that's basically what it is. And with other gymnastics, it's more or less the same. Just, uh, just about yourself and your love of, of gymnastics, why? Why do you love gymnastics so much? Um, I don't know. I just, ever since like I started, it's just like something that's inside of me that I get this fire. And especially when like I compete and I perform, I just get like this rush and I feel like so amazing. You know, um, gymnastics is quite a, um, an arduous sport on your body. You need to be in tip top physical form in order to, to compete at the highest level. Let's talk a little bit about your training. How often do you train? What does it entail? Training goes um, on from Monday to Friday. It's from about half past two to about six every day. And um, that consists of like all different like types of warm-ups and strengths and everything. And then on Saturdays and Sundays from seven to nine in the mornings, I have a conditioning session. And then from on Saturdays from 10 until 11, I have um, a gym session and then training in the afternoons. And then on Sundays, also seven to nine conditioning. And then from 10 until 11, I have swimming. Now, Shannon, you also do ballet and you, you actually do that um, before school um, quite a few times a week. Why, why do you do ballet? I think it just helps with like the grace and the balance and the flexibility as well. Um, ballet is a very like sport that consists of like core and it also like it just helps with everything that I do in rhythmic gymnastics and it just kind of it like complements it. You do a lot of physical exercise but I'm assuming that you have to eat right as well. Do you follow a particular diet? It's basically like well what my like coach wants is um, it's very like small portions and but with the right food so it's like take out all the junk and the sugar and sometimes also carbohydrates we try to avoid those but um, we look a lot on proteins and a little bit of carbohydrate, obviously for energy and like, like natural sugars. Every athlete, no matter where they are in their, in their career, has a support base. That are people that have supported you and, and uh, you know, been there, backed you from day one. Who would you say your support base is? I would say my parents. They've always been there for me. And even though I go through stages where I feel like just giving up because it's, it's too much, especially like with school and also like missing out on like social life and everything. They're always just there and they always just seem to push me in a good way, not to like the point where like I get really irritated, to the point where I realize this is actually what I really want. And in the end, I always just carry, like keep on carrying on because it's what I love. The biggest thing about having a support base is, is being there for you when, when the chips are down. What would you say is the hardest thing about gymnastics? What do you struggle with the most? I would say like a lot with a little bit of like of competitions like I don't get nervous but say I have a very bad day and it's not like a very good competition I feel very down about it but my parents always help me with that and then also like the way of eating is also quite like difficult because going to a party everyone is eating like normal food I always have to like look out on what I'm eating so that's also quite difficult but my parents always say you know what it's for the best so they always support me with that. As I said, with a support base, every athlete will have role models. Now, who are your role models? It doesn't necessarily have to be somebody in gymnastics. It could be anyone in life, but who would you say your role models are? Inside gymnastics, my role models are Alexander Soldatova from Russia, as well as Evgenia Kaniva, who's like won the Olympics three times. And I just love the way like 
they perform and just everything about them is just so amazing. I've, and I've, I've luckily been, I've met them before. So it was absolutely amazing. You are a national representative, you've gone overseas, but let's scale it down a bit. And let's talk about gymnastics at provincial level or even at school level. Is there much going on? What is the scene like for school level? There's not much for rhythmic gymnastics, especially at my level. They've started now um, gymnastics for schools, which is for but more of the smaller kids. So starting from like grade triple north to about grade two ish, there's now like those ages. My school doesn't support rhythmic gymnastics because we've tried to apply for the sport there, but they said they have no space. So that's quite an unfortunate thing because I can't train for my school, which is quite hard because I have to travel and everything. But um, I, I know for artistic gymnastics and like things like acro, there's quite a lot going on the school basis. But for rhythmic gymnastics, it's still quite a small type of thing. At a national level, uh, do you have you represented Northerns for gymnastics or do you guys just go straight to national level? What happens is when I was smaller, um, like the levels programs, you have to go through national, uh, through a provincial level because um, they, they take top like five to go to national level because there's quite a lot. But like at my level now, we don't have to like compete provincially because we already, they know that we're already at the top. So we just qualify straight through to nationals. Shannon, you've represented South Africa at the highest level. You've gone overseas to represent our country. How was that experience? I mean, you, you last year you were in China and you competed in China. How, how is it experience like that to go overseas and, and to represent South Africa on the international stage? Um, well, firstly, it's very scary <laughs> and nerve wracking. But like being there for the very first time, it was it was super scary and I was so overwhelmed. But in the end, I'm there for what I love and I'm just con like I just concentrate. And in the end, it just lands up being the most amazing experience of my life. Let's talk about finances now because going overseas is very expensive. And um, what we've seen, having worked for Game One for so long, is that a lot of marginalized sports don't have the funding. Yeah. Is gymnastics the same? Yes. And how do you raise money in order to, to compete overseas? My parents basically support me in everything. It's very expensive and sometimes like my parents do struggle to try and pay for it. But um, in the end, my dad says, you know what, it's for what I love. And he says, it's all for a good cause. But we now, like we got a like an email from the government and they said that they want to start funding me. So that's quite a lucky opportunity that I've got. So. Oh, that's fantastic. That's great to hear that, that, that your talents are being recognized. <laughs> by the sporting bodies in South Africa. What is your favorite memory? What is your best memory to date? The first time like winning my very first competition was the best feeling in the world. Um, even though it was like only club based, but still like standing up on that podium, like first place, it just gave me such a rush. And now my, like, my most recent memory was from the Youth Olympic Games. The very last routine that I, like, I finished, it was clubs, I remember. And I went and sat on the kiss and cry with my coach. And I just gave her the biggest hug in the world and I just said thank you for everything and just it was just the most amazing thing in the world. That's great. Shannon, let's talk a little bit about your aspirations. Where do you want to go with your gymnastics? What do you want to do? What's your biggest dream? 2020 Olympic Games in Tokyo. That is like my total definite that I'm dying to go to. So everything, all, all sides set on 2020. Are you going to be happy with just attending or are you planning to medal? I think I'll just be happy just to attend because it's the Olympics and you know it's your Olympian as soon as you go. I know it's also very difficult because like South Africa, um, we're not so big in the sport of rhythmic gymnastics and like in Russia and Bulgaria, the girls that do rhythmic gymnastics, they attend a rhythmic school. So I attend normal school and rhythmic gymnastics on the side, but their whole like curriculum consists of everything together. So it would be absolutely amazing if I'm like a place or even just like get um, in apparatus finals. But I think just attending would just be absolutely amazing. You are looked up to yourself. You are becoming a role model for, for even younger gymna gymnasts. What would you say to them? What, what would be your words of encouragement? This is something I use for competition um, mainly. A flower does not compete with another flower. It just blooms. You know what, you must always just remember that all your dreams can come true if you have the courage to pursue them. And just remember for mace, like mainly the rhythmic gymnasts, keep calm and finish the routine. Shannon, thank you so much for joining us at Game On Magazine. It's been an absolute privilege talking to you about your love of gymnastics. Uh, we wish you all the best for your future endeavors. Thank you so much, it was an honor.